we are excited to announce the beta launch of Render Studio. OnShape users now have the ability to create photorealistic renderings of designs from within the OnShape platform. With this integrated rendering capability, designers and engineers can now create hyper-realistic images using sophisticated materials, textures, and lighting within a high-resolution 360-degree environment, allowing faster, easier communication of design ideas. OnShape Render Studio will initially be launched as a beta capability. During this initial release, we have included Render Studio with all of our professional and enterprise subscriptions while we continue to refine the experience and the offering. To get started with Render Studio, simply start inside of any OnShape document and from the plus menu, choose Render Studio. Here, you will be presented with the scene menu where you can select from existing scenes or create a new scene. Choose the part studio or assembly you want to render, selecting a configuration if you have one. Next, set the textilation or display quality that you would like to achieve with the scene. We recommend starting with the default choice, and if you need further refinement, updating the scene later once you have applied your lights and materials. Best practice is to name your scene right away for future recall. Now that we are in the render studio, you will see a familiar environment including the view cube in the upper right corner with a smaller view cube pull down menu for advanced options like setting perspective and depth of field to simulate professional camera settings. The left side of the screen is occupied by the scene graph where you can see the part and assembly structure as well as other scene related options. In the bottom of the scene is the appearance in environment library populated with hundreds of material choices and HDRI lighting conditions. These can be applied by drag and drop or by pre-selection in the scene graph or graphics area, and then right mouse clicking the material choice. The materials and environment library is completely searchable as well. So if you were looking for stainless steel material choices, they will show up by entering a few matching characters. When applying a material texture, you will have the choice of applying this texture to the entire part or to a single face or group of faces if performing a pre-selection. If browsing through the library, the materials are grouped logically by folder. If you need to leave the scene before rendering your final image, the exit icon is available in the upper right hand corner and you will be asked to save your scene for future recall. But what happens if your design changes and you want to update your rendering scene? In this case, we have changed the rim and bolded connections. To perform a geometry or configuration update to your scene, go to the Render Studio tab in your document, and in the Scenes list, you will notice an Actions menu on the right-hand side of the available scenes, where you can open, update, or delete the scene. A great power tip for anybody applying the same material to multiple components is to use the scene graph to filter the selections based on name. In this case, selecting all the parts that are of a certain name. There are a number of other tools at the top of your screen for you to explore, including the setting the shadow and floor location, background color, and other scene saving options. Finally, when you are ready to publish the final rendering, you can choose to add the JPEG or ping graphic with the correct resolution and rendering level, and choose whether you want to add the image to the Onshape document or download the image locally. And here is an example of the final render. Remember, we did all of this without needing an advanced CAD rendering workstation on our desktop. We can't wait to see all the great images of the products made in Onshape out there made with true cloud native rendering. This release of Onshape has added the option for using control points when working with bridging curves. Previously, you could only control a bridging curve using a magnitude and a bias, as shown here. Now, you have the option of using control points to define your bridging curve. When match tangent is selected, you have the option to change the start and end magnitude of the curve that you've created while still maintaining G1 continuity. The same can be said when matching curvature, except now you have the option to control both magnitude and the curvature offset of your endpoints while maintaining G2 continuity. These improvements will give you more precise control over your curves, leading to higher quality designs.
When working with a design that includes translucent geometry, you may want to select something that's behind one of those translucent parts. By holding down the Alt key while selecting, you can now select edges, faces, and vertices of opaque parts that are behind translucent geometry. In this release of Onshape, you now have the ability to change the arrowhead type for your dimensions to be a dot. For instances where you would like to highlight certain instructions on a drawing, you can now change the color of text directly from the note dialog when creating a note. Thanks for watching. Click the logo to subscribe or see some of our other videos linked here.